So in this video, we're going to take a look at two different numerical integration techniques, the midpoint and trapezoidal approximations. Let's take a look at the trapezoidal approximation first from a graphical perspective. So here we have a function, and I'm going to just show you one interval and the trapezoid that we'll create from that one interval. So we take the height at the left point and the height at the right end point, and we connect that with a secant line. That region there is going to be an example of one trapezoid. If we wanted a good approximation, we would want to increase the number of trapezoids in a particular region in order to make the difference between the secant and the curve as small as possible. Second is going to be the trapezoidal approximation from an algebraic perspective. So the function I'm starting with is 1 over x squared from 1 to 2. And so, first of all, the area of the trapezoid that we have learned back in geometry is going to be the height times the average of the two bases. So the height times base 1 plus base 2 over 2. And what we mean by bases is the two sides that are parallel. Okay, so that would be base 1 and that would be base 2 for our first trapezoid. The height of our trapezoid is actually the width of our interval, which is of our subinterval, which is delta t. And so, in this case, as you can see in our formula, we would end up having delta t times that quantity. So let's figure out delta t, which is the length of our overall interval, 1 to 2, so 2 minus 1, divided by how many subintervals, how many trapezoids. In this case, we're doing two trapezoids, so n is 2, which gives us a width for each of those intervals of, as being one half. So the area is going to be the sum of the blue trapezoid plus the orange trapezoid. So I'm going to take the height, which is delta t, times base 1 plus base 2, which is determined by the height at my left end point plus the height at my end point of 1.5, and divide by 2. Then we're going to add the second trapezoid, so the orange trapezoid here. And so it's delta t times my height at 1.5 plus my height at 2, all over 2. Now, in order to evaluate this, I'm actually going to do a little bit of algebra to simplify some things. I'm going to factor out a delta t that's in common between the two of them. And both of those terms are divided by 2, so I can pull that divided by 2 out. And I'm going to rewrite it as multiplication of 1 half. So I've pulled out that divided by 2 there. And what I have left over is the height at my left end point, the 2 times the height of my middle end point, and then the height at my right end point. And the reason is, is because of the fact that the height at 1.5 belongs to two separate trapezoids, and so it's counted twice in the area of both of them. So what I'll do now is I'm going to substitute the one half in for our delta t with interval, and I'll plug in 1 into my function, and then I'll plug in 1.5 into my function, and I will plug in 2 into my function. And I can do this by hand, or I can let the calculator help guide us in that process. So what I'll do is enter into y equals my function, 1 over x squared. And then what I'll do is I'm going to use the vars key to be able to use our function notation in order to enter this. So I plug in 1 half, which is delta t, times 1 half times vars, y vars, function y1. And then I'm going to plug in 1. So this is just function notation. It's like saying f of 1 then bars, y bars, function y1, and plug in 1.5. Of course, I'm going to be multiplying that by 2, as you can see on the top line of the calculator. Then bars, y bars, function y1. And this is going to then be evaluated at my final endpoint, which is 2, which gives me an, an approximation of 5.5. So now let's look at the graphical perspective of the midpoint. So I have my same interval. I'll go to the midpoint at 1.25. I'll go up to the curve and then go straight to the left, straight to the right, and down. And that will create a single rectangle. 
and you can see that single rectangle here in green. Okay, so it's a rectangle whose height is defined by the height at the midpoint and whose width is the width of that interval. So let's look at this from an algebraic perspective on how we would actually analyze this. So I have my same function, same number of intervals, and so my delta t's should end up the same because I'm still taking my right endpoint minus my left endpoint and dividing it by the number of subintervals, which is two. So I get a delta t of a half. It shouldn't matter whether I was using left rectangles, right rectangles, midpoint rectangles, or trapezoids. The width is still the same based on this number of intervals. So I'm going to take the height at my first midpoint times the width of the rectangle plus the height at my second midpoint times the width of my second rectangle. So in other words, in this case, it'd be my height at 1.25 times a half plus the height at 1.75 times how wide that rectangle is, which is one half. Once again, I will go to my calculator and use the bars area with my function still in y1. I'm going to do y1 of 1.25 plus bars, y bars, function y1 at 1.75. So I'll add those two values up and then I'm going to divide by 2. All right. So now how can we tell if the midpoint approximation is an under or overestimate? So I'm going to draw a line tangent to the curve at the midpoint, and I'm going to take the area of that triangle that's above the tangent line, and I'm going to rotate it around so that it sits on top of the rectangle. And notice it's underneath the tangent line up above there. So that shaded region there is equivalent to the midpoint rectangle. So the midpoint rectangle has the same amount of area as the trapezoid formed by the tangent line to the midpoint, as we can see from this diagram here. Hence, because our function's concave up, the tangent line lies below the curve, so it's an under approximation. So hopefully, as you can see, it's the concavity of the function that tells us whether the midpoint approximation is an under or overestimate. In this case, the curve is concave up, so therefore the tangent at the midpoint is below the curve, making the midpoint area approximation less than the actual integral. Take a moment to pause the video and make sure that you're okay with this concept and rewind if necessary. Now, the concavity is also important for the trapezoidal approximation as well. Since the trapezoid is formed by the secant line, if my curve is concave up, my secant line will lie above my curve, hence making the area of the trapezoid there greater than the actual area under the curve, making an over approximation. So let's take a moment to examine both approximations together on the same picture. In dark green was the trapezoidal approximation, and this dark shaded rectangle is the midpoint approximation. And now I'm showing an equivalent quadrilateral to the midpoint approximation, which is that blue trapezoid. So while both of those are trapezoids, the midpoint trapezoid is different than the trapezoid from the trapezoidal approximation. Hence, we want to make sure that we're not confusing those two values. In summary, the difference between the two is that the trapezoid equivalent to the area from the midpoint approximation uses the tangent line at the midpoint of a subinterval, whereas the trapezoid formed in the trapezoidal approximation uses the secant line over a subinterval. In both cases, the midpoint and trapezoidal approximations depend on the concavity of the curve as to whether they will be under or over estimates.